Well, welcome everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, bring you together and to spend some time with you about liver tumors today. Please, if you have questions, um, you can do two things. You can speak up and ask, or you can type them into the chat and uh, we will uh, answer them at that point. Um, as I said before, I will share with you the digital slides so that you can also study them uh, after we are uh, completed. So I'll share my screen now and we will go to the right spot here. Let's see. I thought I had the slides all pulled up here, but they did not appear in my window. Okay, here we are. Now this presentation also includes uh, all of the uh, slides from the uh, previous get together uh, on fibrolamellar uh, tumors as well. Uh, so if you want to review some of those, you can. But I'm gonna start here with slide 38 and uh, we will talk about some of the uh, variants uh, that can be seen in uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, and this is, there are a lot, uh, just based on the morphology. So we have uh, steatohepatic, so fatty. We have clear cell ver versions. We have a chromophobe uh, variant. We have an inflammatory or lymphocyte rich type of uh, tumor, uh, scarring or fibrosing uh, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. And then there are some other patterns. Uh, one that looks a lot like cirrhosis. So it's called serotomimetic or mimicking cirrhosis. And you'll see some of those that are in that pattern with the nodularity and fibrosis. Then there are two variants that I don't have examples of uh, which have a sarcomatous uh, feature, um, a spindle cell component. In one of those, the spindle cells are cytokeratin and vomentin positive. Uh, in the other, uh, they are cytokeratin negative, but vomentin positive. Uh, not much is known about them. They're not common variants. And then uh, these additional variations. So my goal as we review these uh, cases, I have a large number of digital slides, is to um, explore for you some of this spectrum of different uh, patterns, uh, differentiation, and uh, morphologies that can be seen in um, hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay, so of course the low power view, and I've, most of these are resection specimens. I have some that are needle biopsies that we will discuss as well. Um, but always the low power magnification is very important to get a flavor for the type of disease. Uh, in this particular example, it doesn't look like we have very much background cirrhosis because here we can see the normal liver over here, and it doesn't look particularly cirrhotic, although we do see this one long 
fibrous band here that may be indication of cirrhosis. And the other thing to notice here is how infiltrative this pattern is. Very often, the pedocellular carcinoma has a pushing rounded border rather than an infiltrative border, such as you see here, uh, where these cells sort of push in and amongst uh, the, the hepatocytes, the liver parenchyma, and you can almost draw directly a little geographical map. Now, looking at these cells, you notice quite a large variation in size and shape. Some are very pale, some are more eosinophilic. Um, another feature that helps you to remember that this is hepatocellular carcinoma is the presence of uh, true endothelial cells. You see one here, right along there. Um, and so many times these channels will have uh, true endothelial cell uh, wrapping around some of the uh, tumor cells. Uh, another feature that can be seen in hepatocellular carcinoma is this pseudoglandular formation, formation where, where the uh, cells form a sort of a lumen, uh, as some of these appear to be doing here. So that's one uh, pattern. And you can see it's a very uh, infiltrative pattern uh, in and amongst this uh, hepatic parenchyma. Now, here's a contrasting case. Again, we can see there's a background of cirrhosis uh, in the uninvolved liver. Um, and then we see very sharply demarcated rounded nodules of tumor, some a little bit on the pale side, some more um, amphiphilic or darker staining. And so we'll take a look at these. And these have a very trabecular pattern. Um, Notice these anastomosing cords of uh, trabeculae of the uh, hepatocytes. Again, we might see um, endothelial cells. I don't see them well here. Uh, but you can see there's a degree of nuclear atypia. The nuclei are enlarged. And so this is a case where you have clear-cut nuclear atypia and an architectural a pattern that is uh, quite distinctive and different from the surrounding normal hepatic parenchyma as we see over here. Although even here, of course, you can see there's some nuclear variation. Um, this other area has a little bit more clear pattern cytoplasm which is uh, you know, sort of, this would be more on the clear cell variant uh, type of uh, morphology of hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, if you just had a needle biopsy of this kind of a this pattern, it might be more difficult. Um, and that's where some of the immunostains or some of the other um, morphologic stains could be helpful. Um, in terms of defining the architecture, identifying endothelial cells in here, and uh, verifying that these are hepatocytes. But you can see in this particular area, we have no normal structures, no bile ducts, no uh, central veins, and so forth. All right, we'll go on to another uh, variant another variation. And here you can probably tell already, this is again more of the clear cell uh, pattern. Uh, notice we have some more eosinophilic cells here, and then these broad areas of very, very pale uh, cells. Now, is this a clear cell or are, are in fact, it looks as though in this case, this is a very lipid rich uh, type of uh, variation, where these clear spaces are probably filled with lipid. So this would be a steatogenic uh, 
uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. And in this case, it might be very difficult sometimes to define that these cells are indeed uh, malignant because you don't see very many nuclei. Uh, you have to sort of hunt around to see these. And at high magnification, distinguishing between this and a uh, steatotic liver, uh, you know, steatosis, which is also very common in some settings, might be uh, quite difficult. Um, so this is again where other morphologic features, lack of normal uh, portal tracts. Here we see a little bit of a vessel, but no portal tract. Um, tells us that this is a neoplasm. And I think we get a little bit of a sense that this is uh, not organizing itself in the pattern of normal liver tissue. Now let's look at this area where we did not have that lipid rich change. And here, um, the tumor cells have an almost signet ring type pattern. You might even wonder about a metastatic you know, poorly cohesive or signet ring cell carcinoma uh, in an area like this. But this is all hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, and so just another example of the variation that we can get uh, in these tumors. See how much it looks like signet ring cell carcinoma, doesn't it? Um, so interesting how we see this kind of variation from tumor to tumor, and even uh, within individual tumors, we can see a high degree of variation. Here's another area within this tumor, which looks more like conventional hepatocellular carcinoma with nested trabecular patterns, granular cytoplasm, nuclear enlargement, and atypia. Um, all within this same uh, tumor in the same patient. I think uh, one of the challenges in pathology is learning to deal with the, uh, the variation or the spectrum of disease that we can see uh, with a given tumor or organ system. And that's part of what I'm hoping this uh, session will help you with is appreciating that uh, wide spectrum in the liver. All right, here's another uh, sample. And here we can see some uh, native liver at the edge here. And you see that it has this nodular pattern that looks a little bit like it's maybe has some cirrhosis or fibrosis to it. Um, but it may just be a little bit of uh, pallor uh, in the uh, central zone um, hepatocytes that is creating this uh, vague sense of nodularity uh, in this tissue. And so is this normal liver or is this um, tumor? Well, here we have a fairly normal looking uh, portal tract with some bile ducts here. Uh, arterioles and uh, a vein. So this is a normal uh, portal tract. And by imp implication, then we would assume that the surrounding tissue here is uh, a part of the normal uh, liver. Now in contrast, here we have this nest over here, a nest here, and then this larger area of tumor with very, very pale cells again. So we looked at a clear cell variant. We looked at a lipid steatotic, steatotic uh, tumor. Which of those is these, or is it something different? Well, uh, it's certainly very clear cells, and it doesn't look like lipid in this case. <clears throat> but notice that uh, 
you know, these hepatocytes are not very uh, enlarged. They're not quite variable. Um, and so we might wonder if they're just well glycogenated. Um, and is this just normal liver that's uh, very glycogen rich or maybe microsteatotic or something of that sort? Um, but the answer again comes with the architecture. We don't see any, uh, in this tissue, we don't see a tri portal tract with any bile ducts. We see a little vessel here, but no bile duct. Another feature, uh, and this can be fairly helpful, is these uh, large eosinophilic droplets. Uh, and we'll see these in a number of uh, other examples. Um, these may be alpha-1 antitrypsin or some other gluco, um, or some other polysaccharide uh, type of uh, glycoprotein uh, that is uh, sort of precipitating out uh, in the cytoplasm and uh, is part of the uh, disease process. All right, let's go to another case. Similar sort of uh, multinodular pattern. Very pale or clear cells. Here's the peripheral uh, non-tumor hepatocytes. And we can see here that many of these cells are also quite clear. Uh, there is not much inflammation. Um, and we're not seeing normal bile ducts here. So while this might have looked like it was um, benign liver tissue, in the absence of any biliary structures, this may be still part of the tumor. Um, and so what we might have is you know, hepatocellular carcinoma, and then a very dominant nodule or subclone in the hepatocellular carcinoma that is displacing or compressing even its own tumor, its a, other parts of the tumor. And again, this is the, the clear cell variant. Uh, in this particular case, a lot of clear cells. Um, and here, I think we can see maybe there's a little bit more uh, variation in the cells and a little bit higher grade nuclei. Now here we have again the tumor over here. And then let's look at this and see is this tumor or is this normal uh, liver? And here in contrast to what we saw in that earlier area, we do have a portal tract here with bile duct, small arteriole, and vein. So uh, this is um, normal, or at least native uh, liver parenchyma adjacent to this clear cell variant of the tumor, whereas over here, we have the clear cell variant of the tumor, but then we also have uh, an area of tumor uh, there between that nodule or capsule and the liver capsule at the margin. Okay, another case. Um, here again, looking at the normal liver or the native liver, I guess you'd say. We can see there's some fatty change. We see a portal tract here. We see a degree of nodularity here. It's not very pronounced uh, fibrosis. It's not, maybe not even a fully developed cirrhosis um, that's present here. But we do have then this tumor. And this tumor is kind of uh, following a, a trabecular pattern of growth. You can see uh, sort of nests and islands here, uh, some cords of tumor with intervening fibrous tissue. And it's not very hard to see that these are malignant cells because the NC ratio is pretty high. 
Uh, it's not a poorly differentiated tumor, but it's not a really well differentiated tumor either. So it's in that middle category of moderately differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma in a, a more macro trabecular uh, pattern. And then you can see adjacent liver with uh, some steatosis. And then a little variation here in this area. And we see a, more of a ballooning cell change in the tumor here. See how big these cells have become. You can still see the cell membranes very easily, but the cytoplasm is very uh, uh, pale, granular, vacuolated appearing. Uh, and the nuclei look much less conspicuous. So again, a little bit like that signet ring variant that we saw earlier, a little bit of that suggestion here with these uh, very large ballooning hepatocytes and very disorganized appearing. It's not the usual uh, organized pattern. Uh, here again, we see this nice feature of uh, investing or wrapping around many of these uh, nests of uh, tumor cells with endothelial cells. And so uh, cytologically, that's often a useful feature if you have a needle biopsy or needle aspiration of one of these tumors, you can oftentimes see these very penetrating uh, endothelial uh, structures with the tumor cells surrounding them, or conversely with a nest of tumor cells surrounded or enveloped by endothelial cells. Okay, are, are you bored with this tumor yet? I hope not, because we still have several uh, other examples uh, to, to share with you. So here's a needle biopsy. Um, and looking at this at kind of low magnification, I don't see any areas here that look to me to be truly different or more normal compared to the other areas. So we'll just take one fragment and sort of look at a higher magnification from one end to the other. And it looks like we have some lipid, uh, some lipid vacuoles in the tumor, in the tissue. Uh, I, I see some sinusoidal spaces perhaps, but it also looks like there are endothelial cells here. And there's, you know, some variation I don't see any uh, bile ducts. I see a few pseudoglandular spaces like these right here. And that's often found, it's often a feature in the more well differentiated uh, hepatocellular carcinomas to have these pseudoglandular structures. So uh, we also see maybe here a little bit of uh, bile production, this sort of uh, yellowish pigment. Another good marker that this is a hepatocellular tumor. In the uh, early days of my practice, before we had uh, good immunohistochemical stains, um, I, we used a histochemical stain for bile to help to demonstrate that a tumor was originating in the, bio, in the liver. Now I'll just point here to one little artifact. Um, I'm sure you see this little triangular um, uh, indentation in the tissue. And uh, I, I imagine that most of you know what this is. This is a uh, artifact of using a tooth forcep to pick up the tissue. And uh, in doing that, you create this little indentation where you push aside the tissue and sort of crush it a little bit. And uh, so uh, that's one reason we try not to use tooth forceps um, if we can avoid them. And uh, we certainly encourage our clinical colleagues to do the same, to not use a tooth forcep to handle uh, tissue uh, that's going to come for pathology.
So here's a, another needle biopsy case. Um, and here, I think you can see quite clearly that there's sort of two types of uh, fragments here. We have these sort of connected fragments that are longer. And then we have these very small fragmented uh, pieces that are falling apart in between and they're bluer. So we'll go and look at the cohesive fragment here first. Um, and we see there's inflammation. Um, we don't see much normal liver parenchyma. We see some bile duct proliferation here and inflammation, uh, maybe a little liver tissue there or maybe tumor tissue. We've got endothelial cells wrapping around it there. Um, fibrous tissue, and then we come to, to this other tissue. So not in much in the way of normal liver tissue there, um, and then we have this very nice uh, trabecular corded pattern of uh, tumor. Now these cells, again, they're nicely, uh, you can see the endothelial cells sort of making small channels here quite nicely. Um, and the cells though are, are really fairly uniform. The nuclei are small, uh, little variation here and there. So, um, this could again be a, a fairly well differentiated uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. If we do a CD34 stain on this case, uh, we'll see every one of these little spaces is lined by endothelial cells. And that is an indication that the tumor is producing uh, vascular endothelial growth factor or VEGF, uh, which is a um, a marker for neoplasia. As we mentioned last time, you can sometimes see some of this in uh, uh, sort of pre-neoplastic adenomas, uh, but it's well developed in well differentiated um, hepatocellular carcinoma because uh, the entire tumor will be uh, composed of uh, nicely endothelialized uh, tumor cell uh, groups. I like the way this has this uh, sort of pseudopapillary appearance uh, with these uh, endothelial lined trabeculae, uh, as you can see here. Uh, I say pseudopapillary, it's forming little papillary structures, but the, rather than having a central fibrovascular core, uh, these have the vascular spaces outside the, the tumor cells. All right, one more example here. Sorry for the pale slide. You can see again the cirrhotic pattern uh, in the native liver tissue here. Um, a lot of inflammation. Probably this is a hepatitis C case. Um, a lot of fibrosis of these nodules. Um, and let's look at these cells here in comparison to what we see uh, in the tumor. So a lot of granular cytoplasm, big macronucleoli, but generally there's the liver cell plates are fairly small, uh, one or two cells across. Um, and we don't see those prominent endothelial cells that we saw in the previous cases. So we'll go then to the tumor, which is over here and includes this area and this area. Let's go to uh, higher magnification. And here we see, um, again, fairly uniform hepatocytes, um, a little bit of suggestion of endothelial cells, not very well developed here. There's one there. Um, sort of closely mimicking that benign hepatic tissue. And then over here, I think we can see a more abnormal pattern of these cells um, infiltrating or composing these nests uh, in a very fibrotic background. So this is kind of the serotogenic uh, type of uh, uh, variant or serotomimetic uh, pattern. Um, it's sort of very fibrotic 
but we don't again have any portal true portal tracts, no uh, bile ducts associated with this, even though we have large vessels. Let's look at this here again. So again, no um, bile duct in this area, just the uh, tumor cells around it. Another example, we had some more normal uh, liver parenchyma here at the margin, again with sort of the pseudo pallor appearance, and then the tumor. A little bit of inflammation in this one, a little bit of fatty change. Again, you can see the endothelial uh, pattern in some of these areas. So I think you're beginning to get a feel for the, the spectrum of disease and some of the things that I look for uh, to define it as uh, malignant. Now this is a, a fairly subtle case. Um, and one of the things that we see here, so here's sort of a uh, portal tract that you can see here, we've got a few bile ducts here and inflammation. So we're looking at cirrhotic liver on this portion, sort of macronodular, very large nodules. And then here at this one margin over here, uh, we have a portion of tumor. Um, and this is a, what you might call the glassy cell version or variant. Uh, you'll notice how very, very pink and, and finely granular the cytoplasm here is. Uh, so this would be, this was the only example I could find of this sort of glassy appearance uh, to the cytoplasm. So it's very fine, granular, eosinophilic uh, cytoplasm. Now in some hepatocellular carcinomas, we can also see uh, pigmentation. I believe this is one that's pigmented, is that right? Yeah. So um, very little normal uh, liver tissue at the margin here. But as we come into this uh, tumor nesting pattern, no normal bile ducts. But look here as we come to higher magnification. See this pigment in the cytoplasm here? So this is a pigmented version of hepatocellular carcinoma. Most often this is lipofuxin. Um, it could be on occasion uh, iron pigment uh, or some other pigment, but most of the time it's gonna be the lipofuxin pigment that uh, liver cells tend to accumulate. Um, but it can be so prominent in some cases uh, that uh, virtually every cell area will be uh, darkly pigmented. Here's a little bile plug. Um, and so it could also be uh, bile pigments as well uh, in these uh, tumors. I think I have another example of this. No. We'll come back to sort of the clear cell pattern again. I'm very familiar with this one now. Uh, but notice in this one, we have a, a higher degree of nuclear variation. Um, and, you know, some people might use the term chromophobe for this uh, particular case. I don't think I would. I usually think of chromophobe as being a cell where the um, hypostaining area is around the nucleus, as in a renal cell chromophobe rather than here you've got uh, sort of eosinophilic tissue or eosinophilic areas around the nucleus and then the, 
the clear cell changes are uh, further, further out uh, in the cytoplasm. And then here you can see some of the background liver as well. Now this variant, as you can see, is uh, very, very inflamed. So this is the inflammatory uh, uh, variant. You can see here, we have just a lot of the inflammatory cells <coughs> admixed in between these very large and atypical uh, hepatocellular carcinoma cells. So this in some ways looks like a medullary carcinoma or other very inflammatory uh, lesions that we have seen elsewhere. Uh, now in some of those uh, tumors, uh, checkpoint inhibitor therapy has been uh, effective. I'm not aware that we have been using the checkpoint inhibitors with this particular variant or whether this is related to Lynch syndrome or some other um, anomalous expression of uh, antigens that uh, incites this inflammatory response. I think I actually have an immunohistochemistry here. So this is a CD20 stain, and you can see how uh, many of these cells uh, light up uh, in this tumor with the uh, anti-CD20 marker um, while the intervening liver tumor cells here, these large cells are negative. So that can be helpful in defining this inflammatory variant of hepatocellular carcinoma. One last example of uh, the pigmented variant. Sometimes this pigmentation is a little bit subtle, like right here or right here, a little bit more here. And then sometimes it's uh, all the cells uh, in a particular area uh, will be strongly pigmented. Let's see if I can find another area where it's that way. Here's another multinodular pattern, not a difficult one. This is more along the lines of what I would think of as kind of the chromophobe version. Uh, notice this cell here, you've got this nucleus with a, a halo around it, a clear space, same thing here and here, a little bit more here. Uh, so this may be the chromophobe uh, pattern uh, that has been described um, in some, some of these cases. I don't think that that term has the same implications that it does in the kidney. Uh, where that implies particular therapeutic options uh, and chemical uh, differences. Now this uh, particular case I think illustrates um, the far extreme edge of uh, these tumors. We've seen a lot of the well and intermediate differentiated areas. This is a very uh, undifferentiated uh, tumor. Uh, and as you can see, at high magnification, you have a wide variation in size and shape of these tumors, of these cells. There's very uh, modest amounts of cytoplasm. It's probably a little bit granular a few uh, cytoplasmic inclusions or pigment in a few areas, but mostly this is just very high-grade 
anaplastic carcinoma. And uh, we do see uh, a number of these kind of cases in the liver um, with just very wide range of size and shape, atypical mitoses and so forth. These are the, the worst looking uh, uh, kinds of uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. And obviously in this particular tumor, um, some of the markers are not very useful. You don't use your endothelial marker in this tumor. Uh, if you can get it to stain with any liver cell marker, uh, you will be lucky. Um, probably will in some, to some degree, uh, but it's just a very high grade anaplastic type of uh, tumor, uh, these very poorly differentiated hepatocellular carcinomas. And I'm gonna skip this case, this marker here. Well, this one is uh, worth looking at here. Um, this is going back then towards the well-differentiated tumors, uh, towards the more chromophobe-like uh, or clear cell-like uh, tumors. And notice that here, this clear cell change is, is, is patchy. This is still tumor over here. Uh, it just doesn't have the same um, clear cell change. You can tell it's tumor because again, we've got these nice endothelial cells coursing through the tumor. So this might be a, a well-differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma in contrast to that very poorly differentiated one we saw before. Here's a little bit of uh, bile stasis, and then you're out into um, more normal uh, liver parenchyma with uh, built, uh, portal tracts and so forth. Well, let's take a minute or two and talk about uh, the immunohistochemistry in hepatocellular carcinoma. There are a number of markers that uh, are widely used, um, and some are good for some purposes and others are better for other purposes. So with hepatocellular carcinoma, the most sensitive and most specific marker uh, is arginase 1. And this is not the, maybe the most widely available one, but if you've got any arginase positivity in a tumor, you can confidently say that that is a liver-derived tumor. HEPPAR1 is also quite a specific uh, tumor for liver differentiation. Uh, we don't usually see it in other uh, tumors from other locations, uh, but it's not completely sensitive. So there are a number of the more poorly differentiated hepatocellular carcinomas, which would be negative with HEPAR1. In contrast, uh, glipocan 3 cytoplasmic staining, is uh, quite sensitive in these poorly differentiated tumors. Um, but of course, glipocan 3 can also be seen in other tumors. Uh, some yolk sac tumors, uh, various other uh, sites can occasionally have positivity. And so if you're outside the liver and you're trying to determine, is this a metastasis from the liver or, or something else, uh, probably arginase 1 would be better than glipocan 3. Now we know that AFP is a useful tumor marker in the serum. Uh, it can also be used as an immunohistochemical marker, but uh, as in the serum, it's a low sensitivity marker. Uh, fairly specific, uh, can of course also be seen in some germ cell tumors, uh, but it is uh, uh, not the most uh, sensitive and so it's not as widely used. Now recently, um, there have been developing uh, markers using um, RNA for in situ hybridization for albumin. So if you can detect the synthetic uh, ability of a uh, cell to tumor, a cell type, 
because you can identify this in situ hybridization between the probe and the RNA that uh, guides the development and secretion of albumin, that is very liver specific. Um, problem with this is that it overlaps uh, between hepatocellular tumors and biliary tumors. And in fact, in our laboratory, we routinely use it uh, primarily in uh, the uh, well-differentiated adenocarcinomas where we want to know, is this truly an intrahepatic uh, cholangiocarcinoma uh, because it's making these glands and so forth. So it's not a, we're not, is it uh, hepatocellular or is it cholangio? It's, is it cholangiocarcinoma or a metastasis from somewhere else? And, and in that case, the albumin is, ISH is very useful. Uh, CK7 is usually negative in hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, positive in uh, cholangiocarcinomas, and then I've mentioned the CD34 staining, which uh, can be useful to define um, the presence of endothelial cells. Uh, and that's helpful, particularly in the well-differentiated tumors. So let's just uh, take a couple of examples of uh, some of these, uh, putting this to use. Here is a, a needle biopsy. We see uh, hepatic parenchyma here and inflammation. And then we see tumor cell here, uh, sort of a little bit trabecular pattern, maybe a pseudo gland like structure, looks different than the native liver and so forth. So we might think this looks like uh, epidocellular carcinoma. And sure enough, here's our um, arginase one. I'll make sure that's the right one. I think it is arginase one. Nope, this is HEPAR, excuse me. So HEPAR one, uh, it stains the normal liver tissue as you see here, and it lights up the tumor tissue here uh, in this nest here. So uh, we can say this is hepatocellular carcinoma. It's not metastatic. Uh, squamous cancer or something else from another organ. Uh, just to verify what we're looking at here. All right, so this is a CK7 stain. And as you can see here, um, it's staining all of the bile ductular proliferation. Uh, around it, and these nodules and nests are negative, and our tumor I think this is the tumor here. The tumor is essentially negative for the tumor, and it highlights the normal bile ductular proliferation process. Another example, um, this is an example of um, glutamine synthetase. Or, oh, so this is glutamine synthetase, which uh, really doesn't belong here, but this shows you the geographical pattern uh, that can be seen in glutamine synthetase in certain uh, hepatic adenomas. So I, I, that's just sort of a flashback to a different topic. Now, I mentioned you can do a uh, stain for bile, a histochemical stain. Uh, you could also do mucicarmine. Uh, this uh, supposedly is the bile stain, but it really doesn't uh, show that very well. Um, it's supposed to give you a little bit of a green cast in some of these cells. And I think that's what you're seeing right here is this greenish color is the specific staining for bile uh, in this histochemical stain. And therefore you define this process as being from the liver. Now, another stain that's really quite helpful many times is the reticulin stain. 
which uh, will highlight the uh, architecture for us. And so um, this is looking at the, uh, I think that adenoma case. Um, and here, the reticulum is this dark black pigment uh, that highlights the microarchitecture. And so you see these uh, sort of uh, abortive pattern sinusoids. They're not really well developed here. Um, and uh, so this is more in keeping with that idea of an adenoma. Um, here's a portal tract, however. Uh, so we're probably in more normal liver tissue uh, because we do have a portal tract here and you can see the bile duct here. So let's take this as being kind of the normal architecture and then go look at a tumor in contrast and you'll see how this uh, nicely delineates uh, around each of these uh, nests, um, giving you the uh, nice abnormal architecture of a well-differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, so this isn't used as much anymore. I think this is more a, a stain for uh, the old guys like me. <laughs> who uh, will uh, be able to use this. So, so this is where I wanted to stop for tonight. And I will, we have a couple more uh, topics in this uh, liver tumor session to cover, including hepatoblastomas and cholangiocarcinomas, uh, which I'd like to do next time if we can. So I, I'll... Uh, stop the sharing here and take any questions that you may have um, about uh, what we've talked about and uh, open the floor. Thank you, Professor, about your lecture. Um, for me, it's difficult to die. For me, it's difficult to diagnose liver cancer in the biopsy and uh, uh, in um, to understand that it's actually a subtype of liver cancer. Yes, I agree. The needle biopsies are challenging um, for the reason that you don't get all the architecture and uh, you have a wide range of these different morphologies that can occur. Uh, and that's why I thought it would be very helpful for you to see a large number of different kinds and patterns of uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, where it's easy, where you've got a big resection. Uh, and then when you're looking at biopsies, you'll be a little better prepared to understand and, oh, this could be that variant and so forth. And uh, I have a question for you. Of course. Uh, uh, can, uh, could you uh, explain uh, uh, clearly about the uh, specific uh, liver cell and uh, the uh, The specifics about the liver three, cell and what? Three uh, three uh, pattern. Uh, cetal, cetal uh, uh, okay. Can you explain clearly for her about the pattern? Uh, about uh, okay. uh, yeah, about uh, each, uh, every single cell. Okay, so the yeah, there are there are three things that can look fairly similar: the uh, clear cell variant, the steatogenic or steatotic fatty variant and the chromophobe variant. Um, conventionally, chromophobe cells have the nucleus with a clear halo around the nucleus. That is a chromophobe cell. The clear cell variant has very pale or finely dispersed uh, uh, cytoplasm. It may cluster a little bit around the nucleus and then be clear elsewhere. And you'll have a sharp 
cytoplasmic border between that cell and the next cell. And the uh, steatogenic uh, variant is uh, a very a completely clear droplet. So it looks like lipid. Um, and there's, there's no cytoplasm that's evident in that. Now, the, uh, the importance of these variants is only for you to be able to recognize that it's a variant. It makes no difference in prognosis, no difference in management, and so forth. So it's purely a morphologic variation that the pathologist needs to recognize to give the right diagnosis of hepatocellular carcinoma. It's not something that the clinical colleagues need to know. I asked you this section that we caught in the biopsy. Um, uh, we caught in the biopsy. Uh, it uh, <clears throat> sometimes uh, ha we have a mistake in the stain uh, technical, so I can define. I didn't read uh, them. Um, yeah. Yeah. The the other important thing there is to recognize that some other uh, liver lesions like uh, nodular hyperplasia or adenoma can also sometimes have clear cell areas or lipid droplet rich areas. And so when you see that pattern, you have three possibilities. You have the primary liver disease, you know, steatohepatitis, or you have lipidized tumor from adenoma or nodular hyperplasia, or you have hepatocellular carcinoma with the lipid or clear cell change. Um, so that's a little bit tricky what there. Are, uh, what's the clinical? What are the clinical? Well, you use other clues to define the difference. So uh, for example, that's why I talked about endothelial cells. Um, adenomas don't have endothelial cells. Hepatocellular carcinoma does. And so a CD34 stain would very clearly say, if it's positive, this is hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, steatohepatitis, you usually have intact portal structures with some degree of inflammation or damage, you have other changes that suggest it is a uh, hepatitis rather than a neoplasm. And the clinical story is usually different. They will say mass, if they're thinking it's an adenoma or a carcinoma, they'll say you know abnormal liver functions or abnormal ultrasound or something if it's uh, steatohepatitis. Good questions, good questions. Um, Dr. Mary, any questions from your side? I just want to know, um, is it often that you can give the, like the variant of uh, XCC uh, in uh, biopsy specimen, or you just put it in the description of uh, microscopic uh, examination? Thank you. Yes, that's a good question. Um, I don't, uh, I don't do subcategories on the on the the diagnostic line. It would be in the description or a note, um, or may not even be there. You know, I just recognize it in my mind, but the diagnosis is hepatocellular carcinoma, you know, well differentiated or moderately differentiated. And uh, that's, that's all. Thank you. Well, any other questions? We've gone an hour. 
I thank you for, for joining me. I will uh, post the recording and send you the link uh, soon. Uh, been a very enjoyable uh, session with you and uh, we will do it again uh, next month and finish uh, the, uh, the uh, liver uh, tumor the topic. Thank you. Have a good day. Work hard. See you, you soon. Good night. Good night.